Alright, so, um, in short, I got some information on this, and it's not as easy as, uh, as I'd hope it had been, but it's okay. So, this is how it works. Um, in short, first off, you're going to create a user, right, vendor1. You're going to make sure that there's a related partner, or res.partner, or customer, or vendor to this particular user. This is important. In addition to that, we're going to come back here once we create a new group, right? Because you'll see this is the group, but first we're going to create it. So now you go, and again, make sure you're in debug. Go to groups. Um, uh, we'll look at the one I created, right? You're going to want to create a new group from scratch. And you're going to, we're going to use this to mimic it. What application are we talking about? Purchases. What name do we want? Uh, whatever you want. Not a big deal. Next. Which users will this group be affiliated with? And this will allow us to... Yeah, I just put everyone in here, but you could just apply to vendor one RSH because this is, a, you know, this is their own unique group. Next, menus. What menus do they have access to? Menus are these things up here. These are menus. So in the purchasing module, which menus do we want them to have access to? Purchases, purchase, purchase or purchase orders, and then just purchases, RFQs. So next, uh, access rights. These are, you're going to see a blank list. You're going to see nothing here when you create this. You want to add all of these. These are all required. And honestly, the only way to understand which uh, which at, which objects are required on the access rights list is to create this and apply it, and then log in as the vendor, right? As that vendor user, which I think I have over here. Yeah, so I'm logged in here as vendor RSH. I go to purchases, right? And then you'll log in, and it'll say, "Oh, you can't access this because." they need access to stock moves, right? So you go back here, you add stock moves. You do it again, it'll say another error, product template, product. So just, I already went through that, it's a pain in the butt, but these are what you need to add. Then you can give read access, write access, create, delete. Here, give access, uh, create to the PO, purchase order line and the purchase order. Um, then rules, this is where it gets tricky. Here you have to create two new rules. One rule is for the purchase order lines. And on this, you're going, this is the configuration. Read, write, create, delete. And this is, let me just exit that. This, this is the piece of code you have to write. This is the domain filter. This is a lot, this is what applies the filter. So we're filtering something out that essentially partner underscore ID equals user dot partner underscore id dot id so we're saying the filter is the partner id we're only we're isolating we're filtering by partner id is the vendor which is equal to the user dot partner underscore id dot id so this is definitely code and it would be under a different billing model um were you to depend on our team to execute it for you but you may just want to ask um, your, you know, you may just want to ask Manasa, you know, whether or not she's familiar with this, and to maybe correct you where you've gone wrong, or just shoot it over to me, and I can figure something out for you. But this is uh, the code for the the purchase order lines, and then this is the code for the purchase orders. You don't technically need this, but you should just apply these um, anyway, because what this says is purchase uh, partner ID. Then the child of user dot partner I underscore id dot id. So essentially, it means um, this would give access to the vendor as well as any other uh, partners in the system that are affiliated with the vendor through a parent-child relationship. And then, of course, you apply these, right? And that is it. So really, in short, apply the user who you want this group to be associated to this group. Then you apply the menus which you want them to see. Then you apply the access rights which you give them access to. And then you apply the rules which is where you design the filters uh, in order to isolate the view according to, in this instance, the partner ID.
and then it will affiliate it'll say the partner ID who's allowed to see this is the user dot partner ID dot ID so now I go into purchasing in this database which is PS test EMO then I see there's three POs we go in here as vendor one and I see only my POs automatically no filters applied so in a nutshell that's how it works um, you can probably expand on that and do some research on forms online and things like that but uh, I think this this hopefully is enough to get you started uh, if you have questions of course forward them on over